Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Go, Jared. Jared Brandon. <laughs> I'm going to leave the go, Jared, in there. And me, Todd Novak. How's everybody doing? And we have a returning special guest uh, for a very specific reason. Uh, and that might be? Me? Matt? Mattiverse? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes, you win. You want, that is the correct answer. <laughs> you want me to reference the some new new pedals? You mean? Uh, yeah, you uh, yeah. you have a c- couple of announcements, and uh, I asked very nicely and politely if we might help to break those. So we'll hopefully be you know doing that. I know you already have a little bit out there, but um, for the rest of the world that may be not paying attention to Instagram intently which I, I don't know who isn't because you've got one of the best Instagram feeds out there. But we'll get into that in just a little bit. So let's get to it. What's going on in our music worlds this week? Jared. My 62 Gibson SG is one of my <clears throat> prized possessions. That, I love that guitar. It's one of my favorites. And uh, the neck on it is Y. And uh, just my favorite era of Gibson SGs. And um, the neck position, pickup position, uh, has not been working. And um, for those of you who don't know, I build pickups for a living. I repair them for a living. And believe it or not, it's been broken or non-working for about four months. I just haven't gotten around to it. And uh, so this past week, I decided to get it out. And I said, you know, I'm going to nip this in the bud. Because the pickup works, I know that. But um, I finally figured out the problem. And I took the pot uh, off the harness and and messed around with that. And I mean, it's a 1962 uh, potentiometer, uh, volume potentiometer. So it's it's really super old. And uh, But that wasn't the problem uh, either. So I finally figured out that uh, it was in the switch. And what uh, there's some contacts in that switch if if any of you out there have ever taken your guitar apart you have an old gibson three or uh yeah three-way switch toggle switch you'll you'll notice there's these little brass connector thingies that (laughs) they're either connected or they're not and that controls your your switching so i just took a very fine like a 2000 grit sandpaper and gently scored uh, those little connectors and by golly, it, it works, works perfect again. So, um, that's, that's what I did. I repaired my old guitar and didn't really have much time in it. And, uh, I was really glad I didn't have to take anything else apart or replace the pot, which would have been a nightmare. Cause being it's a 1962, i I would have been anal retentive and would have had to have mm-hmm. an original, it's 1962 replacement because it would just get on my nerves knowing it wasn't the right pot in the guitar. Nice. Yeah. So also just to add to that, I've got a 64, uh, Gibson SG special and that I just required recently. And, um, I had Tony with pick guardian. Uh, he made a new pick guard for that. And, he he does the best job. It looks good um, on the guitar, and he he um, scraped the plastic. And well, he he conditioned the plastic so it kind of looks older. Uh, so I'm really happy with that too. And pretty soon I'm gonna get a, a different bridge put on it. In fact, it's in the mail right now. So I'm anticipating putting this uh, bridge this newer bridge on this guitar so I could uh, put some smaller gauge strings on it. So Nice. That's you get stressed out playing those guitars? I'm guessing they got some price not, to them. Not, I know, but I just, I keep them at home. I never take them out. Um, gotcha. So they're, I just really enjoy them at home. You know, when the wife's at work, I'll just plug it in and take, you know, if I'm working in my shop and I just, I'm working and working and working. And if I get stressed out about something or I just need to step away for a minute, I'll plug a guitar in and just let loose. And that makes everything better. It clears my head. And then I can walk in and and complete the task. 
Uh, so that's one of the perks of having a shop at uh, around where you live. So or underneath yeah. where you live, technically. So, but that's not where it is. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Well, thank you for sharing, Jared. No problem, man. Really sweet. Matt, what's going on with you, man? Uh, just building pedals. You know, I'm just doing a few micro runs of a few different pedals, basically just runs of 10, and then I usually keep one and or maybe keep two <laughs> at times, but just trying out some stuff, just ideas I had that I wanted to put out there just for the heck of it, so... But mainly building those and trying to get on top of making demos and taking photos and all that crap. So that's that has got to take an awful lot of time. I mean, I do this and I know how how much time this takes. And I also do a lot of that sort of thing for my actual work, the, Mm -hmm. the real job I have. And I'm I'm impressed uh with the with the amount that you put out and uh constantly making it new. Yeah, it's kind of hard. I mean, luck, luckily I get to sort of scratch a bunch of bunch of different itches by doing it. You know, I get to play play guitar and stuff or, you know, other synth stuff and build the things and work on the artwork and screw on with the video software. So I tend to get, you know, burnt out in one area, but then I might get re-excited by screwing around in a different area, I guess, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. I get sort of zenned out doing it, to be honest. <laughs> that's that's what that's a common thing. That's what almost everybody that uh, we've had on, w- regardless of what they're building, that's that sentence almost always has been uttered. Yeah, it's sort of weird. It's some, sometimes you know you'll be doing it all day and you just you know get a crick in your neck and get sort of tired of doing it. But then there's other times where it's you know about time to go to sleep and I'm sort of like feeling like soldering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I do the same thing on a very, very, very small level. And I, I thoroughly enjoy it. So I can only imagine like once you get in a, in a groove where you're not worrying about either messing it up or making sure that you're not putting the wrong part in where it just kind of becomes second nature to you, it's probably really great. Yeah. I mean, that's, especially you have, it's a little easier when you're building 10 or 20 or something or yeah. in a row, you know, because then you sort of you and sort of remember remember you, how you did it each time, so. <laughs> yeah, and you're listening to Slayer while you're doing that, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that usually a variety of, of podcasts? You know, this podcast and other guitar podcasts, but then just mm-hmm. a lot of like totally not guitar podcast kind of stuff at all, too. So. Oh, I see. So you can just zone out and not pay attention. Oh, that's no, I I understand <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> Uh, no, that's cool. I, I envy those who are building things, uh, at the level that you guys are because, uh, I, it's, it's a special thing to be able to do. And I think getting the enjoyment, getting the, the, like you mentioned, the, the Zen factor out and, and also, you know, aiding to your livelihood is solid. Well, I can Mm -hmm. vouch that you put a lot of effort into the video, um, portion of it because i i mean right before our podcast i was kind of looking through and uh this particular rhythm division drone and the mtla or the mtl assembly i i watched that video i uh, probably six times it just (laughs) it it reminds me of old video games and you got the weird background going on i mean it just Mm -hmm. i was so into that I, I don't ask me why i don't i don't know because it was just why? really no, i'm just kidding i said no <laughs> no it's really really super awesome it's just yeah. i don't know the combination of the sound and what you got going on the the little fingers turning the knobs in the pedal with the <laughs> like the creepy weird just background. don't do it with your actual feet right. please yeah there's well, there's one guy that, that does uh, a craigslist it, it, he posts a lot or enough to where I think it's a lot, but I recognize I hate this, but I recognize this dude's got he's got feet <laughs> that I, I'm not gonna say like bare feet are bad on the pedals, but I would really prefer not seeing them. And I, why do you insist on showing your feet 
when you're taking pictures. He does like lay down. He'll like put it on the floor and stand above it and then take a picture of him. I'm like, get your feet out of there. Like bare feet? Yeah, the b- b- bare nasty man feet. Like, no, <laughs> dude. I mean, why Come would on. you want to p- buy a pedal from a vehicle? Well, That's icky. I haven't bought anything from him. So anyways, <laughs> uh, let's see. What's going on in my world, you ask? <laughs> well, That's right. What a great segue. I uh, have a show coming up this weekend for our Johnny Cash tribute, and uh, I'm trying to work out a new rig. I'm running my Godin Fifth Avenue Kingpin, which has a P90 in it. It's a hollow body. It just looks cool. I've mentioned that before. I'm saying it again. Deal with it. Uh, yeah, those are neat, neat it, guitars. Yeah, it sounds great. But, it you know, a P90 doesn't necessarily when plugged in sound like an acoustic guitar <laughs> so yeah i have to do some finagling there and uh i've decided this time to run it out of not my tube amp but uh, um, uh my mustang three uh, so i have it setting to the set to the completely dry no effects uh twin setting and then i am running a lr bags uh para direct input uh, acoustic direct box uh with the uh with the preamp and a five band eq on it it's pretty much from what i hear from others who are playing acoustic guitars which i'm not actually playing acoustic guitars but mm. this is a pretty this is like the go-to pedal like you want your if you want your acoustic guitar to sound awesome in a live situation plugged in this is what you need to use that's just according to some people who do it a lot. So I'm going with them on this. Anyway, so I I tried to get that dialed in. It's pretty touchy. Um, there are there are one, two, three, four. So there's five band EQ, but with two of those bands, there are secondary knobs, and there's also a volume knob, and there's an invert, so you can invert the the uh, the phase on it, and. Um, I think it's, I think uh, hopefully I said that right. <laughs> um, it's not actually my pedal, so I'm borrowing it. So I'm allowed. If that's wrong, I am sorry. But there is an in, there's an invert button. It says invert, um, and you can go in through your effects loop or just uh, direct um, through XLR too. So nice. It's a pretty versatile piece of equipment and really reasonably priced. So you can pick one up used. I think for like ninety four bucks or something like that. I've seen them as low as that. Uh, but I, it's, it didn't have the, that sort of acoustic chime, that, that um, multiplicity of sound that, that you can get from, a, from an acoustic guitar. It's hard to explain. But um, So then I added, I also have a Boss um, uh, AC3, uh, which is the acoustic simulator. Mm-hmm. Uh, which by itself kind of sounds like you're running an acoustic simulator. But when paired with this, all of a sudden it woke up. And I was like, oh, that sound, that, there, that. And I have it set to the standard. There's four settings on that. Uh, standard, jumbo, one called enhance, and one called bezo. No, let me bezo. ask. Yeah. Bezo. Yeah, do you, where, and I'm not familiar with the, the, the bags, Yes. Thing. So, where is the the pickup, or what kind of device do it's, you? Well, do, it's just a it's a like a box. It's it's like a preamp box. So it's just so it's not it, it doesn't even pedal. go on the guitar. No, no, no. It go, it runs in between your signal between the guitar and the amp. Oh, okay. I was gonna say because or it, or shall I say if you're running an XLR cable, yeah. you're just going direct into to the board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't you just play an acoustic if that's what the right? Sound you're and what I was going to say, <laughs> right? What I was going to say was that that as be. well is that if, like a violin, for instance, they sell, and I think you yeah, might be familiar with this little mics, that, little mics yeah. that that just go directly where the sound over the sound hole. Yep. That's where the best sound comes out of that I, sound. I hole. completely agree, and I just happen to be make doing three lefts to make a right. That's, that's the only thing. I bought. I got this guitar, and I was like, "This, I love this. I lo- I want it. I want it. I want it." And that's what I do when I want something. Right. And I got it, and it looks awesome. It's a disease. And every single time I've tried to play, I know I'm doing it wrong. I know that I'm 
that I should just get an acoustic and either go with, you know, the electronics in the acoustic out or mic it or something. But I haven't done that yet. <laughs> Maybe down the road. So anyways, it sounds good. Sounds good. And and to, and I did test it up against uh, my friend. Let me borrow his uh, Takamini. Uh, he's got a really nice cutaway uh, electronic. And I plugged both of them into the exact same amp. And I tell you what, mine sounded better. Nice. So that's what that was a tiny little like, okay, good. I'm not going to sound like a moron up there. I think it's hard to get a good plugged in acoustic sound. I've never had much luck. Yeah. Doing it. It always sounds sort of funny coming through PAs for some reason. They're either like too bright and strummy or too woody. And yeah. Right. You know, the, the crowd, it, it, I don't think you're going to have anybody out in a crowd that will say, hey, wait a minute. That doesn't sound like, you know, Johnny Cash in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. That guitar sounds like it's a piezo guitar. Yeah. Who in the heck's going to say that out well, in the yeah, and, yeah. Nobody. I know. Well, I so. say it. And that's a problem. If I, right. if I, you know, it gets in your head. If you're playing and you're like, this doesn't sound right, something's off. You're. It's like when you, if you mess up a lyric, most people aren't going to know, but you know, and that will throw you, yeah. that throws me off anyways. It's so It's true, yeah. It's hard. Uh, I guess the mark of a professional is that it doesn't bother you anymore. Because <laughs> I'm not one. I'm not a professional. Uh, anyways, um, so we have... Matt from Metaverse on the line right now, and he is a return interview e. Our first interview, if you care to listen, you can go to theguitarnobs.com and listen to it for free. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and it was that's actually one of our uh, highest rated episodes that we've got as far as numbers go. So people out there like you, man. They should buy some pedals then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this, you know, maybe, I don't know. I won't even say we're going to move the needle, but hey, you never know. I don't know. Um, so we got you on today because we talked over the internet through typing in words and you told me, hey man, I've got two new pedals coming out. And I thought, that's cool. Let's get let's get that word out there. Let's let you talk about them a little bit. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. So um, we're going to get into that as soon as you tell us your four on the floor. One, two, one, two, three, four on the floor. I'm ready this time. Go for it. All right. Uh, the first would be uh, boss. OC2, always a favorite favorite pedal of mine. Ah, uh, is, that had, a, is that the let's see the OC2? So that's is that a an old old one or? It's just of, like the the octave down one, but it does it does sound different than the OC3. I think the OC3 was more like digital, like the Pog sort yeah. of or something like that. Yeah. That's but, the one you hear mo most people actually referencing. It's at least that's why I asked because it's yeah. It sounded I mean, nice I never got it like obsessed enough to like search out any particular one, but I did. I did have a few different ones over the years, and they definitely all sort of had their own mm -hmm. character and some sort of tracked better than others. But I always thought those were fun pedals to play with. I didn't really use like the two octaves down, but I like to put the mix the octave down in a little bit for mm -hmm. fun. It just like kind of standard, just kind of running it like that all the time, or uh, sometimes just like for for weird leads and stuff, or uh -huh. or for some like particular like single line riff that would sound more fun with extra bottom end, I guess. <laughs> nice. Now, do you use that with bass too? Uh, I at that point when I was using them, I didn't play that much bass, so. Uh -huh. I'm not sure how well they were. I think, you know, they didn't really seem like they tracked super well as you got lower in the, on the string. So mm -hmm. I guess maybe on bass, it might've been sort of a warbly mess. <laughs> oh, but you like the warble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm into weirder sounds now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's number two? Uh, number two would be uh, MXR micro amp. It's just a little one knob boost pedal. Uh, you know, I was 
I'm going to think about putting the ZVEX show super hard on there because I really like that one too. But the, the micro ramps seem like a little bit brighter or something. So That one gets pretty high marks. I know when I was looking for... Um uh, uh, my first attempt at looking for a, a boost or a preempt type thing, uh, that one always was in the running with yeah. any, basically any conversation around those kind of pedals. Yeah, I sort of like to use low low wattage amps. They're sort of like turned up to the point where they're almost breaking up. Mm -hmm. And something like the micro amps sort of just gives you more gain without that much more volume because the amps already sort of pretty much at its headroom peak <laughs> yeah pushing it cool man and what do you got for number three uh probably just like a crybaby dunlop crybaby wah i never really got too crazy investigating a bunch of different wahs you know i had the vox one or whatever too but mm -hmm. that's the one i remember from my youth always being on the board the vox uh, no, the Dunlop. Like oh, the Dunlop, just stand, yeah. Just the standard, you know, $70 well, It's private. weird because there's so many versions of that, and it's, you know, they haven't, they haven't really distinguished themselves very well between the different models. I mean, you just have to look at the bottom yep. for the most part. Um, but it's, I'm curious, uh, you know, I wonder if they're ever going to do an optical version of that. And I hope I don't know. I don't think they have. I'm pretty sure they haven't. But I wonder what is stopping them from doing that. Just evolving the uh, the, the pedal. Yeah, I don't know. I know Morley does a lot of. I used to have a Morley endorsement back in the day, and they had a bunch of optical volume and wah pedals. They did. You know, if I'm wrong out there, and they did, they've done that. Send me a letter, and I will apologize to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we talked about Crybabies a while back. It's one of those that's one of those pedals that you in your career in your guitar career you probably buy and sell about three times. Yeah, it is like yeah, it's not because with Waz it's hard to get the. I never had one that I like totally loved. Right, you know? <laughs> right, and then you're like, yeah. this thing's taking up room. I can go get another pedal if I sell it. Yeah. Uh, well, and now pedal boards are you know smaller, so. The, the small uh, the miniature ones. Yeah, the mini ones. I, I kind of want to get my hands on one of those, but an optical one, I think. I want to try that. Anyhow, all right, give me number four. Number four would probably be the venerable DL4, line six. That, that's I think the that, green one, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was probably like sort of the first, you know, big, big delay pedal, mm -hmm. I remember. And I liked that you could like do like, I think it had like a limited like 20 or 30 seconds of looping you could do on it. So it was like enough to be able to play a chord progression and then noodle noodle over the top of it or work on, yeah. you know, playing I, parts together. I see those come up a lot uh, on Craigslist and I, it's kind of weird because uh, especially the, the line six, I mean, they make good stuff. But their casings, they're they're huge. Yeah, those are huge. Yeah, no, so, that that was a pedal that you'd always take off your board too, because it like sort of needed its own power supply or like yeah, four D batteries, and a lot of times you're only using like one or two of the things on there, so you didn't need something to be that full featured. But yeah, I remember having a lot of fun with it at the time. It well, they still of, hold their hold their value. I mean, they're you know they're they range from. I think I've seen them on, on reverb for about 150 bucks. Yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, for a used pedal that's, you know, hasn't really evolved much from that yeah, one. It's like 15 years old, so. <laughs> yeah, not bad. All right, man. Well, thank you. That's a, that's a good little lineup. We'll get that up on the, uh, the blogosphere uh, shortly. And glad that we got that one out of you on the second round. <laughs> Okay, Matt of Mattaverse, lay it on us, man. Tell us about your brand new pedals. Uh, yeah, I just I guess I have just have a few few new pedals. Two are I guess uh, new, and one is sort of an update of a pedal I already do. But I'm just doing you know small, really small runs of them. You need to order like ten enclosures, I think, to be able to get the mm -hmm. custom 
custom order done. So are you getting this <laughs> through, uh, through mammoth? Yeah. I've been doing all my enclosures yeah. through mammoth since I stopped drilling them and painting them myself. Yeah. It's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, it's hard to be really super precise over and over and over with like punching the holes yourself and using the mm -hmm. drill press. And plus it's like pretty messy and you got to like dip them in like some sort of a solvent to clean the cutting oil off of them. And yeah, it's a commitment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was good. I probably did like a hundred plus pedals that way. And it was a definitely a good learning experience, but once you sort of get the first few enclosures under your belt, then it gets a bit easier to get things lined up how you want. Yeah. And I, I mean, this way you're also able to, you know, do some of like the textured bodies and stuff. Yeah. I've been doing the pretty much all textures lately just because I find for doing videos, like they don't reflect the lights. So that's a big help. Oh, interesting. <laughs> but also they sort of like, I don't know. I feel like they like, hold up better they like i don't know they look more sometimes with like a shiny coat like you notice any tiny imperfection and i'm sort of a perfectionist about it so mm -hmm. <laughs> and then i drive myself crazy so. so they look kind of modern too with like the matte color as well yeah i'm just doing mostly like uh you know just like one single color of ink and mm -hmm. single color powder at this point but so uh, before we get in deep into the drives, tell me about the your your little icon that you have. Oh, like the little guy. Yeah. Like the little ghost-looking guy or whatever. Yes. Uh, I don't know. That was just something like it's basically just like a combination of a couple pieces of like clip art. <laughs> 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 like this, like uh, in this, I use this Pixel Mater program yeah. on the Mac. It's like a cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, Photoshop or whatever, but like they have like some built in shapes in there or whatever that you can manipulate. And that's just like a combination of a couple of the shapes. That's I pretty much do all my art for the pedals in that program with shapes at this point. <laughs> awesome. It's just like moving squares and adding circles on top of each other and things like that. So, well, it's weird because there it's, you know, it's, it's got a bit of a, uh, it's almost like anti-art in a way, <laughs> you know, by just by the fact that you're doing that, not necessarily based on concept by, but based on, well, there's that, there's that thing. I could use that, <laughs> you know, like that's a shape I haven't used. Let's put that on there. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like usually like you, you have like infinite, you know, possibilities of how you can manipulate the shape and then right. you can do effects that bend things and things like that. But yeah, like that little guy, put it on, I put it on like what drone synthesizer or something. And then I sort of, I sort of liked it. Then I started just like putting a little one on all the pedals is just sort of like, I don't know. I couldn't really think up an emblem, you know, besides like an M with a circle around it. Mm -hmm. That already, works, man. And I have a, like a lot of that sort of already on buttons and stickers and things like that. So, yeah, it kind of looks like, um, it's almost like the, the, like the, a cross between like the unknown comic and, um, which for anybody that doesn't know what that, that's a pretty old reference. Whoa. Hmm. Uh, so anybody that now that I've uttered that unknown comic was this guy whose shtick was, he just wore a paper bag over his head with two yeah. holes and, and he was really famous for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, his jokes probably weren't that awesome, but he was the only guy who said, Hey, what if I put a bag on my head? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And sort of like a Pac-Man head too. I was like, what is it? It, it, it begs more question than anything. Like, what is that? Yeah, Which is cool. Exactly. If you can get somebody to just fixate on what is that? That's good. Which I think you kind of do with your pedals anyways, regardless of what they look like, you know, like the warble room. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I do all my own artwork and branding or whatever people call it, I guess. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely no expert at it. I just sort of like mess around with stuff that makes me happy for a while, then move on to the next. <laughs> well, they're, they're I, attractive. So that counts for something, man. What, uh, so speaking of like super really weird and really out there, the first pedal that you're going to share with us is, is a, what is a drive. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the drive is basically like, 
I've always like since I started making pedals, like I've always wanted to just like instead of buying, you know, I still buy pedals to try and stuff, but mm -hmm. instead of like I wanted to like build all my, I sort of have this a long range fantasy of like building all of my own equipment eventually, then like making a record with like all of my own <laughs> gear, if yeah. that makes sense. It's sort of like a pipe dream kind of an idea. But I, I bet I guess, you're not that far off. Uh, you know, I don't, I haven't built any like microphones or anything like that yet. Oh geez. So. That sounds really hard. Yeah. But I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you're still going to have to run into probably into something you can't build. <laughs> or you could, you could also just yell into some pickups. Yep. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, along that line, it was just like, I'd been messing around with a bunch of different like overdrive prototypes and give them to a buddy of mine. And it was just like, well, I like it enough to like, I want to have one with like the real enclosure and stuff, you know? And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll throw it out there. And I like put a, a demo of the prototype up and a lot of people seem like someone interested in it, which I was actually surprised about since there is so many like drive for distortion or overdrive or fuzz or whatever you want to call it out there. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, but if you think about it, I mean, you've kind of created your own little niche in the pedal world and just like anything, it, once you become a fan of something, you're infinitely more apt to buy into whatever the next thing is that that brand is offering. Yeah, you know, if people like the aesthetic or whatever, they might be interested to give it a try. Yeah. Well, and I think you, uh, you're you doing a good job of setting up a precedent of saying, hey, the, the thing that I'm going to make is going to be different unique weird wonderful or a combination of all those things based on the pedals you've already made so subsequently anything else that you put out the expectation is that it will be it will fall under that umbrella regardless of what it is and that therefore it's a it's a more desirable thing to have yeah well hopefully we'll see you know i mean i don't like to like you know certain there's a kind of type of advertising it's like this is the best of whatever it is, you know what I mean? Yes. Or this is the cheapest, or this is the best for the price, or this is like the most boutique, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I'm not really interested in like, you know, if Did people you want to do that. Did you just subliminally advertise that this was the best, cheapest, most <laughs> no. awesome thing? You did. <laughs> no, no. That would be funny if I was that clever, but no. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to like, sit, I don't, you know, to me, like a lot of that stuff is super subjective, you know, like the kind of tones people get into, yeah. especially in a drive pedal. So it's like, it's basically just saying like, I made one that I kind of like, you know, so mm -hmm. <laughs> if you like the other stuff I do, you might like it. And it's just like, for me doing, that's why I'd like to do like a micro run because it's pretty, pretty low risk. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm not like spending 50 K to develop some product. You know what I mean? Like it's a lot of time commitment, but as far as like the cost to build 10 isn't like, debilitating to the budget. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the drive. So what did you do with it that you liked so much that, and thought that we would too? Uh, I guess I just wanted to make something that sort of did like a lighter drive, but then could go to like, you know, pretty fully overdriven. Mm -hmm. uh, initially the idea was that like a lot of times that, you know, at night I'm playing, I just wanted something that I could, run into a quiet amp that sort of got me a little bit of an overdriven sound that I wanted and didn't sound, I don't know, too weird, I guess. It's sort of hard to describe the mm -hmm. subjective parts of it. but Can you talk about any of the uh, choices that you made on, on, you know, parts or anything like that? that? Yeah, I mean, I guess like I did experiment a lot with different, tone control options on there because people always seem to want tone controls but at the end of the day i just didn't really i always had like tone control like all the way up so yeah <laughs> i just decided that it wasn't you know what i mean it's like and th especially in this case it was like i'm just building this because i want one you know and i'll put the other eight or nine out there in case somebody else wants one but it's not right. like if uh, they really want an eq they can go get a pedal with an eq on it yeah, it's just for me, I'm old and deaf, so I never want things to be darker. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the uh, this is, um, I mean, it's almost like a glorified boost 
to a certain degree, just in the sense that you have, you know, your one of your main knobs there is a volume. For anybody that hasn't seen it yet, um, there is a gain knob and a volume knob. So yeah. effectively, you could use it as a boost or an overdrive. Yeah, it gets pretty. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't do like a clean boost at all. I don't think, but it does have like a ton of extra volume because if you're like like if you're comparing it to a clock if the volume knob is like at 10 o'clock that's like that's like unity gain with your amp so yeah. anything anything beyond that which is like another two-thirds of the control is all additional volume it's I a guess. lot of volume after that <laughs> but if you have your draw you if you have your gain all the way down uh, yeah. or you know uh, you will get a signal with the volume right oh yeah okay um, so you kind of go from a sweep of maybe a, a boost with a little bit of tooth to it, uh, in, to almost an overdriven sound all the way to like full on distortion. Sounds like. Yeah, it gets pretty distorted. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a I'm a terrible I'm a terrible salesman, I guess. But no, see, you're doing that. You we we all know what you're doing. You're, you're subliminally making us want the pedal. Well, hopefully that's the case. But I, <laughs> I don't uh, know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's funny. What I wanted to say about these micro runs is like, yeah, these are all like, I don't know if I'll make any more of it because I don't think the world needs another drive pedal. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I don't, I haven't tried all the drive pedals to know if I've done anything that's any more interesting than any of the other drive pedals. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I could pretend and say, oh, it's the greatest, you know, or whatever. You, there you go again. But it, I don't think that, it, <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't, it might be the greatest for a certain person, but uh -huh. not, not for everybody, I'm sure. Interesting. So what we've gotten out of this is that it's a small run and it's <laughs> the greatest. <laughs> um, so let's see here. You got, you, you said, I'm going to bring up the small run thing again, because literally people, if you are listening to this and you're interested, you know, I'm going to try to get this live as soon as I can, but you had better move on it if you want to pick one of these up. Um, and Matt, where will you be able to get these pedals, by the way? Uh, they're on my website, metaverse.com. And then I usually put everything on reverb as well. Okay, so you have a small run on both Metaverse and Reverb? Yeah, like I have a thing that like I can, the inventory is sort of shared between the two places so that... Smart, smart. So it's not like, you know, I don't have to like put just one in one spot or whatever. I can like, if I sell one on Reverb, it takes it out of my inventory in my online store or whatever. right. All Vice right, versa. man. So you're going to have 10 of those up there, yeah? Uh, I think there's eight. Eight left. There. Holy eight, mackerel. Yeah. Man, by the time this thing goes live, I hope there's some or else people are going to be mad. at First me, then you. So yeah, you never know. There's only one of the <laughs> kick drum pedals left. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. Um, so next pedal. Just one left? Yeah. Holy milk. That one I only had like eight. That were available. So you're going to, I mean, let's be honest, you're going to do another run, right? Are you going to do another run? Uh, I'm not sure. You know what I mean? I'm just sort of like, I'm pondering, I guess. Hmm. Because by the time you we end up, the, by the time we wrap up this podcast, that one will probably be gone. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I wish if they, if they sold that quick, that'd be nice. But yeah, <laughs> you never know. So, Let's talk about the kick drum pedal because that, that's a weird one. Well, I'm, you know, I checked it out and I said, well, yep, Metaverse made this. It's weird, all right. So tell us about it. Yeah, that was just sort of a, a passion project for me when I, for a while, I tried to do like a, a one man band kind of thing because I thought like just playing acoustic guitar for a whole set and some guy singing gets sort of old. So. Mm -hmm. I'd, I tried to bring like a, you know, I'd bring like a bass drum and then I wanted like another sound. So I'd try and bring a hi hat and then tried to bring a snare drum and put a kick pedal on a snare drum. But then you sort of had to prop the snare drum up and then you couldn't really attach the kick. So I had to sort of like rig up these things. And then I also tried to like 
you can just uh, get like an electronic drum set, you know, and take mm-hmm. like the kick drum like the triggers trigger from that and then take like a, another trigger and get another kick drum pedal. And then like, and then I ran that into like one of those old Alesis drum head things. Mm-hmm. And that was actually sort of fun, but you know, the sounds were pretty eighties, I guess for, <laughs> It sounds like there's an opportunity to one up the Converse uh, yeah. wah pedal yeah. there. Put it in your shoe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put the trigger in your shoe, and then you just stomp along with it. That's a I'm thing. not that smart. I mean, there's already like it's basically like you know. I'm sure you've seen they make like some people make like a it's like a wood block or something, and they might put like a piezo pickup in there. They might put a yeah, you know, which is basically like a contact mic. I've seen other people like do it different ways. This one was more like. It's just like a transistor bass drum. You know, the mm-hmm. controls are pretty simple. So just, let me describe this really quick for those who have not seen this. Uh, looks like it's in a black sparkle case. Is that correct? Yeah, I thought I was trying to think of something that would be like an old bass drum. <laughs> right. Guess. Yeah, I mean, sure. That looks like an old bass drum to me. <laughs> I'll play along. Um and you've got a, uh, it's a, I mean, that's almost like a muff size pedal, isn't it? It's a big box. Originally it was like, like the standard box size. I have like an earlier version. that's like the standard. Uh-huh. Then I found when I was stopping on it, like your whole foot is like yeah bigger than the box then. So kind of all over it. So it's was, got a tone knob, um, a body knob and a volume. Tell me about the body knob. The body nap is pretty subtle. It's actually almost more like uh, decay of the sound, I guess. Mm. But it's sort of funny because when you run it through a guitar amp, you mm-hmm. know, based on the frequ- frequency response of a guitar amp, like it's it sounds different than if you just like run it into a recording interface with headphones on. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like mm-hmm. it almost feels like that body knob works backwards. And so I was like primarily you know, using it through a guitar amp while playing guitar. So that's sort of where the labels came from. It, sort of how- it makes me think how you're describing it. Um, it makes me think of how, like, almost like um, mic proximity. Yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. You know what I mean? Because um, if you got the mic, like, right in the, the you know, the air hole on the front panel, um, I mean, it's full and then yep. if you back it off it, you, you get the all the yeah. ambientness of it and the body control is pretty subtle i think it'd maybe be more noticeable through like a larger amp or a bass amp or a pa or something yeah because this thing's putting out like low primarily low frequencies you know that most guitar amps aren't necessarily you know dialed in to be <laughs> bass amps or amps sure. or kick drums or whatever so because of that, like sort of the EQ looks different as it's running through a guitar amp versus a more flat, full range speaker system. Uh, and then on at the uh, the actual switch, that's a it's a momentary switch, yes. Yep. Okay. Um, now, if you hold it down, does it repeat? No. That's a fun idea, though. <laughs> Yeah, that that could actually probably get pretty messy live, I suppose. Yeah. Well, that's that's a, it's a, it's a super interesting pedal. So if you again, if you haven't seen these yet, and to be honest, you, you kind of have to you you'd have to be following him, following Metaverse on Instagram uh, to have probably had the best crack at seeing these. But if you go to Instagram or Metaverse, you can you can check out the demos for these and just see what it's all about and also get to see his cool videos that he does. So the kick drum was pretty hard to demo, actually. <laughs> I tracked a lot of different... Because it's hard to... It was hard to demo the, the kick drum pedal. So what, what made that so difficult? Uh, just because, of like, trying to... Like, plugging it in direct to, like, like, a recording program or whatever, like, it sounds way different than it sounds coming out of a speaker oh okay gotcha you know what i mean yeah, like yeah so it was hard to like try and capture that mm-hmm. <laughs> i guess effectively so 
Well, I know some people have said about the video, like, oh, they just want to hear the kick drum alone more, you know, or whatever. And I'm like, well, they're already almost, there's only one left. So <laughs> I don't have much. See, but how many I mean, people I, ask that? I don't know. A either. lot, huh? Come on, be honest, a lot. I don't think a, I don't think a lot of people are, are looking, I guess. I think, I think they are. I think they are. I'm pretty sure they are. They will be, especially after the world hears this. Um, <laughs> cool, man. So, well, I, I got to be honest. I'm super excited about the whatever crazy stuff you come up with next. You know, I love the fact that you are pushing things into you know, into almost completely singular needs that we didn't even know we needed, <laughs> you know, that's kind sure. of fun. Do you have, uh, any other plans of new things coming forward that you can maybe hint at? Uh, I mean, I guess the, the other, pe other micro on that I've probably come out with soon is just like an update to that drone tone pedal. Uh huh. And it basically just like, improves the pitch stability between the pulsing and the drone sound. And then it's just got like a tone, tone control for the drone. So you can make it darker or less bright. However you want to look at it. Could I throw in, I'm, I'm going to act. This is in my email to you. Dear mm -hmm. Mataverse. I like your drone pedal. I like it a lot. However, I have found that the signal gets somewhat lost in my pedal board mix. Is there anything you could do about that? Signed, wish I had more volume. Gotcha. I think this one should have, may have better output than the original drone tone. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing is, is like the, the drone sound, I don't know if it's just because it's such a raw square wave. It doesn't like, it's not super affected by like modulation pedals and stuff that you mm -hmm. run it into, I find. Mm-hmm. But I think it gives, it should, like, usually I try and set it so that the volume goes up to the same volume the guitar would be at. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, well, when I had it on my board, I, I guess I was expecting it to be more prominent. And I had the volume, like, all the, pretty much all the way up. Huh. And Interesting. Yeah, so maybe, I don't know, maybe I got one that uh, just wanted to chill out. I don't know. Um, Maybe. You never know. Here's, okay. Oh, wait, there's another email coming in. Dear Mataverse, I have my drone tone, and I'm curious to know what new things you might be adding to the new one. I would love to know if it's even possible to have the drone affected by the actual guitar signal. Signed, liking my drone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, I've ex definitely experimented with that idea. The, the, the second run of the drone tone or whatever, those are already all built and ready to go. So for that, it won't be on that. But yeah, I've experimented with, you know, I wanted to have it so that the, you could have more control over the drone with the guitar. But so far, I've only been able to make it <laughs> like be based on like how hard you hit the string would control the pitch. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Ooh, but I like it, that. But it didn't really uh, work out. Oh. It didn't like have enough range of, you know what I mean? Like you had to be pretty subtle with it to to get to get what you wanted. But hmm. yeah, no, I I think about that kind of stuff. The fact of it is, I guess I'm just gonna have to like learn how to do the microcontroller route, I guess. But hmm. I've really been dragging my feet because <laughs> hmm. I already work on a computer. For my day. job yeah and and they're still like just doing like the videos and the circuit board it's layout, hard, isn't it? the schematics I, and I, like i do I'm the still same like thing. On the yeah i'm like on the computer still like 80 percent of the time you know what i mean yeah you get fatigued imagine, man like, you know, like all of the like you have to program and learn how to do that and i'd be literally be spending like 99 percent of my time like on a flipping computer and that's <laughs> That's part of the reason I started building pedals was to begin with was to like do something with my hands that didn't have a screen. Right. No, I, I, I completely relate. And, it, it, you know, I, what I do for my job, I'm at, I mean, most people are, is you, it's almost yeah. hard to find a job that you're not <laughs> involved with a computer at this point. But, um, 
Yeah, and then when you do your side projects, like, oh, I'm going to do these graphics or this video or this podcast or this um, music that I'm making. It's like, oh, guess what? You got to sit down and work a mouse again. And at a certain point, I just have to say, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it anymore today. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyways, whatever, computers, big dummies. Um well, hey man, this I'm so glad that you uh, that, that you know that we were able to connect and um, get the word out, and I really hope that you get a wave of people saying, "Dang it, I wanted one of those. Make another one, man." <laughs> also, super excited for whatever crazy things that you come up with. So, anybody listening, if you've got a crazy idea for a pedal, send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and he and I can't guarantee that he will respond. I always respond to people. I mean, I got a big list of ideas. Sometimes I think I got like too many pedals out already. Mm. I think like the more common wisdom is to like make like one pedal or two pedals and then put all your uh, whatever marketing firepower into that, but. That's just not how my brain works, unfortunately. So. Well, you're doing a kicker kick. I don't know what that is—a kicker job of it. You're doing a kicker job of it. Tell you what, um, I, need, I need to have lots of different things to mess around with. So yeah, cool, man. Well, uh, I'm gonna let you uh, get back to building pedals. Uh, all right. All the new ones that aren't out yet, and for those of you who want one of these, go get in contact with Metaverse.com or find them on Reverb. With that, I think we have something coming up right now. Would you rather? That's pretty good. Just the golden-throated nice. little buddy Jared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what is it? Would you rather? Yeah. Oh, man, would you rather? Okay. Would you rather have the first tone bender pedal? from way back in the day, or would you rather have the very first crybaby wah pedal? Huh. I mean, I'm talking the first. When they first came out and they were fresh off the assembly line, the first version of both pedals. Which, Which one? one? All right, Matt, you first. Uh, that's pretty tough. I'd probably have to go for the for the wah, I guess. Ooh. Just because it's sort of a... You know, compared to like a box where you pushed a button on it, sort of had a whole different mechanism going on with the how it was built. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, it had, like, yeah. I mean, it really had two things it did. It went, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, well, and I mean, that's iconic. When anybody thinks of a pedal, it's like that's kind of the first one you think of. They still do that. I've got the one I they have. They still make home. the wah sound? The I talked yeah. about that, I think, in a different episode. Yeah. 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 My wife recognizes it in songs. Yeah. The wicka, wicka, wicka. Wicka, wicka. Right. Calls it. <laughs> Jared, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to have to follow suit and do the old wah. I, wah, because I would pr- just, I would probably use it more, maybe. Mm. Especially if it were the first one. Yeah, I mean, you, it, you're really getting more it of a for mental, like a thing. It's a me, it's more of a mental thing than actual sound for me, I think. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I'm gonna go for the. I would choose the wah. Okay, it's sticking out of me. All right, so. I'm going tone bender, man. Okay, I think for me, I like the idea that it, like the wah changed an existing sound, but it still retained the existing sound, and the tone bender literally completely changed the sound. Oh yeah, you know so. I don't know. I, I think I would do that one. And it's a funky old pedal, you know? Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. And expensive. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Used uh, used OG tone benders. Are a yeah, this was like man. a would you rather like get it, somebody gave it to you? That would be the option because I'd never buy. Oh, buy no. Anything. This was a, this would be a <laughs> the magical uh, chest of, of gear. Yeah. yeah, Fairy Godmother has a gotcha, chest of gotcha. old pedals. Yeah. yeah. Gene. Oh, okay. Right. A lottery, genie. Uh, genie. I okay. like the genie. genie. Yeah, yeah, the guitar yeah. genie. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, hey, Matt, this has been awesome, and yeah, thanks we so much, are guys. 
Super stoked that you were able to join us again. Make sure that everybody out there who's listening visit theguitarknobs.com and go check out what uh, what what the new blog is with Matt's um, four on the floor. And we will wrap with you guys later. Thanks, Matt. Thanks so much. Oh yeah, and subscribe. Yeah, that wasn't a question. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit us at our website at theguitarnobs.com for episodes, news, and guest profiles. You can get all social with us on our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash guitar knobs. Give us a tweet at guitar underscore knobs. And check out our gallery on Instagram at guitar knobs. <laughs>